Benedetta is the most recent effort from acclaimed director Paul Verhoeven. He has quite the history when it comes to making films. Paul Verhoeven is well known for directing such films like Spetters, Robocop, the 2000 Hollow Man movie, as well as really big mega cult hits, Starship Troopers, and my personal favorite movie of his, Showgirls. This movie has a very eclectic cast. It stars actress Virginie Ephiria, Daphne Pataka, and of course, one of my all-time favorite, very, very underrated actresses, Miss Charlotte Rambling. This movie tells the story of true events based off of a woman named Benedetta, who was a, brace yourself for this one, a lesbian nun who speaks to Jesus in her dreams and actually gets some powers inflicted from him, kind of like in those Freddy Krueger movies, whenever someone touches Freddy or they burn themselves to wake up, it appears on them and stuff. And this person actually, Benedetta, she can actually predict things and actually has powers and nobody believes her. They think she's a blasphemer. They think she's crazy. But here's the best part. She's a lesbian, which I love. Anyone who knows me knows how much I love lesbians, especially lipstick lesbians. But we're not going to get into that today. we got to talk about this movie. And i got to tell you, wow. This, I believe, is Paul Verhoeven's highest rated critical film. It has an 85% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has a 7.4 on IMDb. I pray that it at least gets nominated for Best Foreign Language Film, because the movie's in French. It's not in English. And everybody does a fabulous, fabulous job. Virginie, who plays Benedetta, is great. Daphne, who plays her lesbian lover, is also very, very fun. And Charlotte also does really well. And the movie also has, I forgot to mention, Lambert Wilson, who is most well known to us Matrix fans as Lamero Lavingian. We'll be seeing him later on this month in the new Matrix movie. However, what I love about this film is how it kind of relates to Showgirls in a little subtle way. You see Nomi Malone, who was played by, uh, what's her name, the, the blonde who was in Showgirls. This is good. Oh, Elizabeth Berkeley, forgive me. And then you have Gina Gershon, who plays Crystal Connors. You see, Crystal Connors was a lesbian as well, and she had brown hair. Daphne Patakia, who's a lesbian in this movie, has brown hair and is the most sexually active. Elizabeth Berkeley is the more naive type person who's just trying to be a showgirl. Virginie Aphidia, who plays Benedetta, is just trying to cope with her newfound powers and her ability to speak to God. And Daphne is always after her. You know, her character is Barta, Bartolomea, I believe is how you say it. Bartolomea, Bartolomea, forgive me. She is always after Benedetta. And it very much reminds me of that kind of dynamic that uh, Nomi and Crystal had in Showgirls in a lot of ways. And I got to tell you straight up, one thing that definitely connects those two is their rating. Showgirls famously had an NC-17 rating in 1995. And I can still remember as a little kid seeing those TV commercials saying NC-17. And I remember... It was something my parents would never let me see. I didn't get to see Showgirls in theaters until I saw it in 2010 for its... Uh, I'm so sorry. I saw it in 2010 for its 15-year uh, anniversary over there at the Enzion in Maitland, Florida. I took my buddy Corey Wilson. We saw it on 35mm Dolby Stereo, not even Dolby Digital, unfortunately. And I remember it was grainy, but I had never seen it. It was NC-17, and I loved it. And it's even Michelle Visage's, you know who that is, from RuPaul's Drag Race. It's even her favorite film. Showgirls is a great cult classic. I thought it was great when I saw it at that time. I still love it now. And this movie feels kind of like that in a way with certain elements, but it's its own thing. I'm talking about Benedetta now, of course. But what makes Benedetta so great is it's never boring. The performances are very solid. It doesn't have the campy acting like Showgirls did. This was enthralling, it was engrossing, and to completely put a cherry on top, this was also, if it was given a rating in NC-17, just like Showgirls was. This was released without a rating at all. When I saw this at AMC 
um, there was quite a few people in the theater. I was really surprised. I didn't think a bunch of just common people would come up to see some foreign language. Well, a lot of people don't like to see foreign language films because they don't like to read subtitles. But this has a lot of nudity and a lot of violence. Again, it's Paul Verhoeven. This is the guy that did RoboCop, Total Recall, Hollow Man. I mean, he is known for virtually everything that he makes garnering an NC-17. I mean, hello, Basic Instinct, he did that too with the leg crossing scene. I mean, the guy's no stranger when it comes to pushing limits, boundaries, when it comes to nudity and violence. And he does it in a very tasteful way, though. It can be appearing as distasteful when you see these films, but anyone who's ever worked with Paul Verhoeven, look, you can read and look at all these interviews. They've all done things comfortably. For example, when they made the movie Starship Troopers, there was the co-ed shower scene. When they were shooting the naked co-ed shower scene in uh, Starship Troopers, Paul Verhoeven himself and the crew were all naked, filming everybody as well, so they all felt like they were on the same team. I mean, Paul Verhoeven, God bless him, I mean, the man's almost 80 years old and he is still making films, and I'm glad that his most recent effort is getting critical praise, and it's getting good reviews, because it's a good movie. By the way, speaking of older people, I want to make something very clear. I confess that I did not do my research thoroughly. I know a few days ago I did my review of the 2021 remake of West Side Story. That movie came out December 10th. On December 11th, the day after, was Rita Moreno's 90th birthday. And I believe I said that she was in her late 70s. So I'm very sorry. I would like to apologize about that. I never would have imagined she was, sorry to say, that old because she's so good at what she does and she looks so great for her age. She was, I'm, I believe she was 87 then when they were making that film, 87 or 88, because remember, it was shelved and stuff because of COVID. But um, yeah, just a correction. Rita Moreno is now 90 years old as of this recording, and she's still going strong. Hopefully she gets another Oscar nod for this new West Side Story. Now back to my review about Benedetta. What else can I say except brace yourself if you see this movie? You are going to see a lot of steamy lesbian scenes. You see it all. Front, back, below, inside, out, everything, everything. Nothing is left to the imagination. And other than those things, I found the film to be very good. It has a very, very, very satisfying conclusion. It has one of those kind of endings where you get a little hesitant for a minute, and it has such a satisfying conclusion. It ends very, very well. I really loved it. This is a movie that is not to be missed. I believe it is currently on streaming. But if you can find a uh, cinema to go see it in, see it with an audience. You'll love the reactions. Anyway... I'm going to go ahead and assign my rating for Benedetta, and it gets a well-deserved A+. Definitely check it out. I would say that it's Paul Verhoeven's second best film. His first will always be Showgirls for me, but this is very, very good. Great movie. Benedetta is must, must watching. Love it. Who cares if you got to read the subtitles? If you speak French, you're going to do just fine. Anyway, thank you guys so much for listening to my review about Benedetta. Look out for my next review, Resident Evil Raccoon City. Take care, you guys, and I'll see you at the movies.